if you've got some slides that you'd like to share. Well, I think, um, can you all hear me okay? Yes, you're coming through loud and clear. Great, um, I think uh, Blaze is gonna advance my slides for me. Yeah, Kyle, okay. got you. you're set, Paul. All right, thank you very much. Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Paul Lorm. Uh, I'm an attorney that um, has represent, uh, represents a number of um, Pinell uh, County Irrigation Districts. And um, Blaze asked me to speak today a little bit on um, uh, the future of CAP agricultural water and uh, in Pinell, and also um, how the how the districts and the farmers are going to manage going forward with mostly a, a, a groundwater supply. Next slide, please. Um, this is just a little background on me. I'm not going to go into that at all. So the next slide, please. This is a map of the uh, Pinell County Irrigation Districts that Dr. Megdal and I have uh, utilized. Um, you, uh, most of you are familiar with the irrigation districts. Um, starting uh, to, the, to the west, in, in the yellow, you can see the Maricopa Stanfield Irrigation and Drainage District. Then um, you move east and you have uh, the San Carlos Irrigation and Drainage District and the Hohokam Irrigation and Drainage District. Then you go south into the Eloy area and you have the Central Arizona Irrigation and Drainage District. This map also shows the um, Gila River Indian Reservation to the north and the Achen Indian Reservation, which is pretty much in the middle of the Maricopa Stanfield Irrigation District. Uh, that becomes important for reasons um, I'll, I'll discuss further. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm wondering if this is the right, if this is the, <laughs> the, the right program. Um, this is a, 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 a synopsis of a U of A study that um, um, was put together, I believe, in 2018. That was very helpful in our DCP negotiations, just underlying the importance of the uh, uh, of the Pinell County uh, agri agriculture to the economy of uh, Pinell County, and what the impact would be of a loss of significant amount of uh, surface water, um, the likely economic impact to the county with that loss. Uh, next slide. I guess I will say, Paul, sorry, I, I was told that there would be an updated slide deck, but I never received one. So this is this is the one that we have. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we'll, um, we'll, we'll skip through a number of these, Kyle, if that's okay. You can, you can skip that one. Um, this just, uh, the next couple of slides will just um, show you what the likelihood of continued shortage um, in the lower Colorado River Basin is likely to be in the next number of years. Um, we, as you know, I think you've heard already, we're in a shortage situation in 2022, and all project, project, projections are uh, the shortage will continue at least through 2026. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide just shows you the different contributions the various states and Mexico are making to the shortage to keep to keep water in Lake Mead. Next slide, please. Uh, I, I, you can go ahead and next slide, please. So this is an important slide um, because it shows what is what the um, state is doing to sort of mitigate mitigate the loss of CAP water, particularly in uh, the Pinell AMA. When we negotiated the, uh, the drought contingency plan in 2018 and 2019, the projections were that um, we could be in shortage as early as 2020, and um, it would at least go through 2026. Fortunately, we stayed out of shortage until uh, 2022, until this year. And the mitigation plan developed by the parties was that water that had been either, um, either um, stored as, um, as credits or, or we call it intentionally created surplus in Lake Mead could be utilized to help um, mitigate the loss of substantially more water that the shortage um, would, uh, would, would result in. So in the case of the agricultural districts, they had a 300,000 acre foot agricultural pool of water to draw on um, 
that went down slightly in 2024, but um, to draw on through 2030. Um, but with the shortage and the DCP reductions uh, uh, that accompanied the shortage, um, that water went to zero. And so for, two, for 2022, um, 105,000 acre feet were made available or are being made available to help um, mitigate that loss of 300,000 acre feet. But out of that 105,000 acre feet, 16,500 16, is new groundwater capacity that um, the districts have been developing with funding from the state and federal government. There is no wet water or what we call wet water, but surface water mitigation going forward after 2022. But the funding was, was intended to be adequate to develop 70,000 acre feet of additional groundwater. Now, obviously that doesn't replace 300,000 acre feet of surface water, which is the product, with the loss of which is the product of um, the shortage uh, reductions that have been planned since 2007, plus the uh, 2019 DCP reductions. Next slide, please. This is an important slide because it identifies what did each district in the Pinell AMA is receiving in, the, in, in terms of mitigation water. The shaded um, color is the mitigation water the districts are receiving, but that's in, in replace of what they would normally be receiving in, in, in normal uh, Colorado River conditions, which is the ag pool amount, um, um, in the far left column. So basically, if you drop to the bottom, you can see that while the, we would normally be receiving 295,000 acre feet of ag pool water, instead we're receiving 105,000 acre feet of mitigation water, 16,500 of which is actually groundwater, not CAP water. Next slide, please. Uh, you can you can skip through these next couple slides. That you can skip through that one too, and that one also. That one also. That one also. If I had time to get into some of these, I would, but I know I don't, and I, I need to save time for Dr. Megdal. Um, this is the short-term uh, look at what the uh, shortage conditions are likely to be. You can see there's a 90% chance or more we're gonna be in shortage, meaning late meat will be below level 1075 um, through uh, 2026. So we need, to, we need to figure out a way to deal with this uh, loss of CAP water, uh, certainly in the short term and possibly even in the longer term. Next slide, please. Uh, there is some uh, optimism though, if you, if you do some long-term modeling, which is what the state has been doing, uh, looking at the time period from 2023 through 2059, you can see that there's projections of year, years or some reasonably decent chances of years we will not be in shortage. Any color that's in the yellow, the gray, or the, um, or the blue, represents years we, we are really not in shortage. Uh, uh, meat is above 1075. Now, why it varies so widely is the, is, are the variables you put into the model, which in this case are listed here uh, on the top row, what the likely hydrology will be, what the upper basins demand will be, what the on-river demand will be, and, and what the actual CAP demand will be. But um, the good news in this slide is that under the best case scenarios, we would, we're only likely to be in shortage half of the years out of the next 40 years or so. Um, the worst case though, it looks like we're in shortage about 90% of the, of, of the time. So that's how widely these scenarios can vary based on these particular vari variables. Next slide, please. I'm gonna do a quick case study of uh, Maricopa Stanfield uh, Irrigation District, the district I, I work most closely with, you can see their chart on what their comparative use of CAP water and groundwater has been um, over the last 10 years or so. 
CAP water was 60%, um, uh, roughly 60% for uh, the first part of these years that ultimately became closer to 50%. Um, and then um, it began to become a little more heavily slanted towards groundwater. And this year, this is what we're projecting because the only surface water is the mitigation water I discussed earlier. So it's looking like Maricopa Stanfield will rely on something like 77% groundwater, 23% surface water. And next year without mitigation water, it could even be the worst case scenario, of course, is 100% reliance on groundwater. Next slide, please. Um, this is just a description of the district. I won't go into that for the sake of time. Ne next slide, please. Uh, again, um, the overall reduction is likely to be somewhere between 270,000 acre feet previously of combined groundwater and CAP water to something more like 220,000. Um, and that's an optimistic number for CAP water um, for this year. I don't think it's gonna be quite that high. Continue, uh, next slide, please. So there are numerous factors of impacting how an irrigation district can um, uh, manage its uh, groundwater to replace a, re uh, a previously dependable supply of surface water. Um, it, a, a, a significant amount of uh, infrastructure is needed to move the groundwater around throughout the district. Obviously new wells are needed some of that of the cost of that has been provided by the state and federal governments in the DCP plan, but certainly more funding is needed. Um, these wells have to be interconnected to existing distribution uh, systems. Um, those systems were built basically to move uh, heavier flows of, uh, of CAP water. So you have to deal with the problems of lower flows, trying to move the water across the fields. Um, so, there's a number of, uh, of uh, infrastructure and engineering issues that have to be, that have to be resolved. We also have issues uh, involving neighboring uh, reservations that have various concerns about um, the districts returning to large scale groundwater pumping. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I won't go into recovery. Uh, next slide, please. This, is, this, this slide shows the Santa Rosa Canal. It's the major canal off the CAP, uh, the CAP canal over here on the um, east side. Um, this canal runs through the central Arizona irrigation district and this area uh, enters the Maricopa Stanfield irrigation district um, in, this, uh, in this area. Right here is the Tohono O'odham Indian Reservation. Um, this shaded area reflects uh, pumping restrictions the district has uh, near the reservation. Uh, the canal continues all the way to the Ak-Chin Reservation. Um, the districts, both districts have used this uh, Santa Rosa Canal to move not only their CEP supplies through the districts, but also some of their groundwater supplies. And um, the Ak-Chin tribe has expressed concerns about that feeling the groundwater has degraded the CAP water. So those are issues, again, we're, still, we're trying to deal with, um, particularly in light of the fact that the districts now um, will not be having much CAP water to run through the canal to mix with uh, um, their groundwater. And uh, the canal will only carry about a third of this, uh, the amount of CAP water it has historically carried, which would be the ak portion of their very high priority CAP supply. Next slide. So just uh, finishing up here, the challenges at the district level are um, how do we move from pumping 165,000 acre feet to maybe 250,000 acre feet a year, which is what uh, we're authorized to do under the law. Um, where do we place new wells and pipelines? Um, how can we best utilize the existing PA CAP delivery system to incorporate the flows of this groundwater? Uh, how do we manage lower flows? Uh, where do we get the funding for this new infrastructure? 
how do we deal with increased power costs relating to uh, um, less water coming through the dam so we have less hydropower production and um, obviously just general budget pressures from uh, loss of irrigation water sales that are going to occur as a result of the reduced water supply. Um, 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 Dr. Megdow will get into some of these other issues uh, involving increased groundwater pumping and the concerns and the Pinell AMA about that. So I, will, I, won't, I won't delve into that. And then I think the next one should be my last slide. So what are the challenges at the grower level? Well, how do you manage a reduced water supply on your farm? Which acres to irrigate? You may only have one half of your normal water supply. So um, how are you gonna decide how best to use that water? Which, which acres can receive an adequate head of groundwater? Um, what do you, what, how should you handle your fallowed lands uh, with weed control and other issues? Um, should you consider other crops? Um, of course, Maricopa Stanfield is very, uh, has lots of major dairies uh, within its service area and, the, and those dairies, dairies need feed. Um, if you switch to other crops, how will the dairies get their feed? And then of course, uh, there are folks who are always promoting different changes in modes of irrigation, but in some cases that isn't, isn't practical. Um, and then you have the on-farm uh, loss of revenues. Employees have to be laid off. You have to delay equipment and other purchases. And of course, um, for those who, uh, for those growers who who actually rent their ground, can they negotiate reduced rent payments? Or those that own restructure land debt. So those are the challenges that are um, facing uh, both the irrigation districts and uh, the farmers in the Pinnell, in, in the Pinnell uh, AMA due to the lack of the um, lack of CAP water under these shortage conditions. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Dr. Megnell now to pick up more on the, on the groundwater issues. All right, thank you. Um, and, and Randy, the timekeeper, um, I asked Paul to leave me five minutes. I'm not sure if he actually did that, but that's what I'm geared toward. Randy. Yeah, you're fine, you're fine, go ahead, sure. And Kyle, you've got my slides there, so um, I'm happy for you to just advance so we don't have to deal another switch. So thank you for the invitation to be here today. I'm director of the Water Resources Research Center. And per Karen's uh, remarks earlier about knowing your history, um, I don't have a lot of farming in my recent history and some of the longer ago history of Eastern Europe in my family, I don't know about enough. So I'm coming to you kind of as a water expert and interacting with the agricultural community, but not a cotton expert or a farming expert. And what I thought I would spend a few minutes doing is complement what Paul has said and what Jeff, Jeff Silvertooth started his uh, comments earlier today on just talking about the groundwater situation and the interface in terms of agricultural versus non-agricultural utilization of groundwater, particularly in the Pinal area, which is where uh, Paul just uh, focused. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide on the left is a, the map I use a lot, but I recently made a presentation where I, people weren't familiar with the Pinal area. So we've got the, the blue bullseye there of, of the Pinal area farming and the challenges associated with the cutbacks. At the same time, the Arizona Department of Water Resources issued a new groundwater model or revised groundwater model for the region. And that really caused uh, some real red flags to go up and, and sparks, because if you look at the next slide, please, Kyle, we, we see a cross section of the Department of Water Resources modeling. And the good news is there's substantial groundwater directly below Maricopa Stanfield in Central Arizona Irrigation and Drainage District. But what their modeling showed was there's not enough groundwater to meet the expected demands or pulls or pumping of groundwater, especially if you take into the expectations of groundwater utilization for municipal growth. And so basically the Department of Water Resources said, 
a couple of years ago, we are not going to be issuing new um, certificates of assured water supply. Moving from these analyses to new certificates are uh, going to be problematic. I think some of you in the audience are part of the Pinal stakeholder group. I'm a member of that, looking at what to do about the situation. And although uh, it's been mentioned models and assumptions, you can tweak the assumptions and model uh, of the model, and that's been done to some extent, but it doesn't take away that deficit in groundwater that's expected over time. So what you have is agriculture going back on the pump, as Paul explained, and agriculture has groundwater pumping rights in perpetuity. At the same time, you've got the municipal growth and expected increases in demands. And so this is causing a lot of people to look at what to do, and we haven't arrived yet at what to do. And this is maybe a more extreme microcosm of what's going on in other parts of the state. And I, I would just note that while Paul showed those bars showing maybe some reasons for optimism, if you follow the probabilities that come out in the Bureau of Reclamation projections and, and uh, their, their monthly reports, it's not looking very good at all for the next five or so years to, to be out of a shortage situation. We might not go deeper than tier one, but it's not looking good that we'll not be in tier one. So generally the mood is pretty somber about the, the situation and we need to put our, our heads together to come up with uh, pathways to solutions. Next slide, please. So I, I wanted to just, for those of you not familiar with the Water Resources Research Center, put up this slide. Uh, we do connect the, the university and the practitioner world of, of water. We're part of, of Arizona Cooperative Extension. I'm going to drop a PDF of these slides in the chat. Some of these links are, are live. If you'd like to keep up with our programs and conferences, our, our 2022 conference, we've got this working title, Arizona's Agricultural Outlook, Water, Climate, and Sustainability. Um, you can follow what we're doing through our weekly wave. I put up snapshots of a couple of recent publications. Uh, our publication, The Arroyo, is based on our annual conference 2018. It focused on irrigated agriculture. Uh, our 2020 conference, uh, giving rise to the 2021 Arroyo. These are non-academic general uh, purpose publications. Uh, focus on, on the next 40 years and groundwater. And we've gotten some nice compliments about the good overview it provides on Arizona groundwater management. And, and specifically closer to home, we've put out Ashley Hollinger at the Water Resources Research Center, a visual guide to water in the Pinal active management area. It's available for, for free download. And I encourage uh, you to take a look for those who'd like to see maps and land ownership and the like. Uh, next slide and my final slide. I wanted to mention to you that four of us on the call here today, three, including myself, Blaze, uh, Dr. Debunker Sanyal, who's a brand new, he's with Jose, a brand new, a uh, specialist at the Maricopa Ag Center. He's a soil health specialist. He's part of the team. Simone Williams, a graduate student, is part of the team. And we're part of this USDA funded project. They won't take the time to read the words, but we're working with California universities in New Mexico State on looking at the sustainability of agriculture in a changing climate. And we're looking specifically in central Arizona and very specifically in the Pinal AMA. And then two of the five project objectives I show there, develop integrated modeling and decision support tools for assessing the sustainability of groundwater and irrigated agriculture in the Southwest United States, and then develop novel extension programming to support implementation of sustainable practices in irrigated agriculture. We formed an advisory committee, and if Brian Hartman's still on the call, he's a member of our advisory committee, along with Kevin Rogers, and we're gearing up. So with that, I'd like to thank you for the time. And as I said, I'll drop my presentation as a PDF in the chat in case anybody wants to take advantage of those live links. We'd love to have you sign up for the weekly wave. Thanks so much.
Great. Thank you, Sharon and Paul. Appreciate all you guys do down there at the Water Research Research Center. Uh, a lot of people do a lot of work there, and we benefit from that. So thank you very much.